Hi everybody. When we think of generating a random number, we often think about picking a number from a wide range of values, like one to a thousand or one to a hundred or something in between. Like I want to pick a number between 50 and 75. It's always a, a large collection that we're picking one particular number out of. Now that's great for many situations, but there's a lot of situations where that may not be necessary. What we're really looking to do is to pick a random value that is false between one outcome or another outcome, or the topic of this video, which is really generating a random true or false Boolean value. And here's what we're going to be doing here. The, when you think about it, when we generate a random value of true or false, what we're really doing is creating the digital equivalent of a coin flip. You might be familiar with coin flips from either your own experience or watching a sports game where whether the coin lands as heads or tails determines what team plays first or in many popular culture you know movies like batman both two-face and joker use a coin and a result of a coin flip to determine what strange and bizarre and cool outcome to perform afterwards what we're going to be doing is not going to be quite as dramatic or consequential but it's still going to be pretty interesting what we're going to do is first look at the code that's going to help us generate a random true or false and then we'll go a little bit deeper in understanding what the code does and some quirks we need to keep in mind as part of making this thing really work for our particular scenarios so what i have here is a function it's called get random boolean and all this function returns is the result of the expression math.random less than 0.5. And so when I call this function, what gets returned is either true or false. And the way this function works is that true and false will get returned with equal frequency. There's no bias towards any one answer or the other. And uh, the reason that this works, the reason it works the way it does, is because of a quirk in the detail on how math.random works. We talked about math.random in great detail in a previous video where I mentioned the range of math.random, the value you, get, you always get from it is zero all the way up to one, but not including the value of one itself. So you might get 0 0.99999, but you'll never get one directly. And the way I can visualize that is by having a solid line at the starting point of zero and a slightly dotted line with a value of one and the other mathematical ways of being able to describe it. Now, taking that particular range of math at random into account, one way we can simplify this is by saying, let's divide that you know, range into two halves. One half is going to be a true half, and the other half is going to be false. And because of how that range works from zero all the way up to one, but not including one, we can divide it equally and just say 0.5 is the center point where if we were to divide math at random into that range, Anything 0.5 and below will be true. Anything 0.5 and above will be the value of false. And that has an equal probability of happening. Now, the expression you see here, where we say return math at random less than 0.5, is a JavaScript equivalent of what I'm explaining right here. But what makes this interesting, though, is this. With the same ease, we're able to specify this is going to be an equal returning of true or false we can also make it kind of go in our favor in any direction we want to. So for example, by adjusting the value from 0.5 to let's say 0.3, what I can do is ensure that the answer is skewed more towards what I want to do. And so for example, by doing exactly that, now look at the way the balance between true and false is determined. There's a 30% chance that true will be returned, which means a 70% chance that it'll be false. So if you were to aggregate and run get random boolean, over and over and over again, which we will look at in a few moments, you'll find that this value is very, very close to being accurate, to being 30% true and 70% false. And it's very easy for us to change the odds very, you know, very easily, similar to how you might do that for a coin that has been weighted down or an unfair coin flip in many ways. So it is not always the case that you might want to have an equal range of values. You might want to have something skewed to one direction or another to simulate like an error case or anything like that. And so don't always think that having it be at 0.5 is the correct answer. Many times it is, sometimes it's not, but it's not wrong if you want to go a different route. Now, before I wrap this video up, because there's not a whole lot of complexity in terms of how to generate a random number that returns, well, not a number, but a random value that is going to be true or false. And 
What I want to do though, before I wrap it up, is prove how accurate or how close our code comes in to being able to generate the exact range of values with the distribution we are looking for. So let me go ahead and go into Chrome. So what I have here is a very simple app. And what you're gonna see in the screen, let me zoom in a bit in case you cannot see it, is that I have the get random boolean function, the same one you saw earlier. And all I'm doing is just returning the value from math.random, it's less than 0.5. And now I wanna kind of validate that what is being returned over a period of time is close to 50% true and 50% false. So I created this little artificial test in many ways where I'm looping through and you know, I'm having a loop that runs 100,000 times. And with each run, I'm calling get random boolean. And if the value happens to be true, I increment the value of true value by one. And if the value is false, I increment the value of false value by one. And then I just keep track of that. And once the loop ends, I print the results to the screen. So let me go ahead and hit refresh to see what's going on. Notice that after 100,000 runs, you'll see that true came up about 49.9 thousand times and false was around 50,000 times, which is very, very close to being 50%. And if I were to change this number like to, let's say, 0.3, like in the, in the example a few moments ago, if I were to run it now, notice what the breakdown becomes. You have almost 30% true and then 70% false. Very, very close. If I want to go even more you know, specific and say 10, which means that around 10% of the values will be true and then 90% will be false, you'll kind of see that coming on, you know, in reality as well. So that's pretty neat, right? If you have any questions, post in the forums at formatcrypto.com where I and others will help you out. You can post in the comments below, but I don't check them quite frequently and the lack of formatting options for looking at code or looking at links in great detail makes it a tough environment. So if you have a question, just post on forum.crypto.com. And if you like the content of this video and you liked how, the, how I approach explaining these things, tell your friends and enemies all about it and subscribe to be notified of when new videos come out. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook and YouTube and wherever you might find my name. And also, I tend to turn all this content that I have as a video into book form. So if you kind of prefer reading things in either paperback or a Kindle edition, there's a book that's available in the description. I will have a link to all the books and any particular book that this particular video might even be related to. So with that, I will see you all next time.